What's happening, everybody? On today's show, a couple of heavy stories from across the SEC this past weekend as a car crash leaves a Georgia player dead following the team's championship celebration, an Alabama basketball player charged with capital murder following a shooting, and we'll go around the conference as Pete Golding leaves Alabama for Ole Miss and more. A Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. The LinkedIn Jobs helping you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Let's jump into it. Plenty to discuss. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws. Around the conference. And we start with some heavy news out of Georgia. As Sunday morning, it was reported that uh, Georgia offensive lineman Devin Willick passed away at the age of 20 following a single car accident early Sunday morning in Athens. Also, Georgia recruiting staffer Chandler LaCroix also passed away due to injuries sustained when the vehicle left the road and struck two power poles and some trees, according to the Athens Clark County Police Department, they issued a statement said approximately 2.45 a.m. Police Department responded to the single crash in the 900 block of Barnett Shoals Road. Investigation found a 2021 Ford Expedition was traveling southbound of uh, Barnett Shoals Road when the vehicle left the roadway, striking two power poles. The uh, passenger, uh, 20-year-old Devin Willock, died at the scene as a result of his injuries and Chandler LaCroix was transported to a local hospital where she died as a result of her injuries. Now there were two other passengers in the vehicle, a 21 year old male passenger sustained uh, minor injuries and a 26 year old female passenger sustained some serious injuries. Now it came out that George offensive lineman Warren McClendon was the 21 year old who suffered minor injuries. He uh, had been reportedly released from the hospital. The 26 year old female, was another Georgia recruiting staffer, uh, Victoria Bowles. She was uh, currently stable as of uh, this report. Now, look, he was a member of Georgia's 2020 recruiting class out of the state of New Jersey, played in 13 games this past year, made two starts, and just a tragic, tragic uh, story coming out of Athens. Crash happened just hours after Georgia celebrated their national championship win over TCU with a parade and a ceremony at Stanford Stadium. Both uh, both uh, the deceased, Willick and LaCroix, were part of the parade. Willick was uh, posting videos of himself riding in the parade earlier that day. The uh, Georgia Athletic Association is- issued a statement saying, the entire Georgia family is devastated by the tragic loss. Uh, they said Devin and Chandler were two special people, meant so much to the University of Georgia, our football program, and our athletic department. Also, Sunday morning, Kirby Smart issuing a statement on the loss. He said, we're all heartbroken and devastated with the loss of Devin and Chandler. Devin was an outstanding young man in every way, always smiling, great teammate, joy to coach. Chandler was a valuable member of our football staff, brought incredible attitude and energy every single day. We grieve with their families for this tragic loss. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey also released a statement said, we join the University of Georgia community in mourning for the loss of both Devin and Chandler. And the SEC uh, family sends its condolences to those families, friends, teammates, classmates. Our prayers are with everyone at University of Georgia. Also, uh, they will be offering counseling to anybody who needs it at University of Georgia, teammates, friends, whoever. Um, now, Warren McClendon, his father released a, a statement on his son following the uh, accident. He said, little Warren was in the car that was involved in the accident and he's doing well. He said in a text message to the Athens Banner Herald, he said, we're asking everybody to pray for Devin and Chandler's family. We are with little Warren and we'll let everyone know more later. Thank you for your prayers. Now, 
just earlier on Saturday, McClendon had announced he was declaring for the NFL draft. He posted a lengthy note thanking all those who made his four years in Athens a special experience. Uh, he became a starter in 2020, earned freshman All-American recognition. His starting streak reached 37 games this year that was snapped in the Peach Bowl. He missed uh, uh, due to an injury he suffered in the SEC championship game. He was an all-SEC first-team selection this past year by the coaches. So just an awful, awful situation, and uh, we'll continue to keep you guys up to date on the details there, but not the kind of news you want me to hear, particularly coming off of what was such a joyous day and there in Athens on Saturday celebrating the championship with the parade and the celebration in the stadium. Just a tragic story. Um, outside of Orr McClendon declaring – Georgia wide receiver Kyrus Jackson also declared for the draft over the weekend. Um, Warren Erickson also announced he's heading to the NFL. And uh, Kyrus Jackson led Georgia receiving in 2020. Had some knee injuries and other things that limited him. Finished, it out, uh, finished out the season uh, this year. 21 catches, 320 yards. So best of luck to him. And uh, just a quick note on Georgia. Uh, two SEC programs, an elite company, only five other teams and two SEC schools were ranked at every AP poll during the season. Georgia and Alabama were the only two SEC programs to be ranked in every single AP poll this season. Shows how dominant both those programs have been and were this year. Alabama started at number one. Georgia started at number three. Bulldogs never left the top five as they, of course, finished out, won the national championship. And uh, Alabama, despite a couple losses, slipped out of the top five after their loss to Tennessee, dropped to number 10 after losing to LSU. A number 10 spot was the lowest Alabama was ranked all season long, and then they continued climbing back up there. All right, when we return here on Locked On SEC, we're going to get you caught up with uh, another just awful story coming out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, concerning one of their men's basketball players that's coming your way in just a second but this episode is presented by our friends over at linkedin jobs and we've been reminding you guys in a new year if you're a small business owner or hiring manager you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs with linkedin jobs you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills values and experiences to help you achieve your goals linkedin jobs helping you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools that go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. LinkedIn Jobs, they help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Go post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to go post your job for free terms and conditions apply going along here locked on sec and uh we mentioned some heavy stories obviously um with the uh, the death there, Georgia, and then uh, a an arrest over at Alabama. Just not the kind of news you want to hear. As Alabama men's basketball player Darius Miles uh, was charged with capital murder in connection with an early morning shooting near the campus that killed a 23 year old. Miles was booked into the Tuscaloosa County Jail around 5:45 Central on Sunday evening. An official with the jail uh, said in a statement. Uh, the school said that Miles is no longer on the team. He's a junior reserve forward from the D.C. area, 21 years old, uh, charged with capital murder, along with uh, 20-year-old Michael Lynn Davis. On Saturday, like we mentioned, Alabama announced before its game that Miles would miss the rest of the season with an ankle injury. This bayou has been removed from their athletic department website. And the university said uh, he has been removed from campus. He appeared in six games this year for Bama, scoring seven points in the win over Memphis. Uh, Tuscaloosa police said the shooting occurred early Sunday morning in the Strip, just off University Boulevard, right near campus. And uh, just another tragic thing that uh, didn't need to happen. But Darius Miles, uh, 
there's video out there of him being arrested, being taken to jail. Just, again, awful story for an otherwise it's been a great year for Alabama basketball. NATO it's doing a fantastic job, and they will move forward without Darius Miles. So thoughts go out to his family and uh, certainly that of the deceased. Awful, awful story. In uh, other Alabama news, transitioning over to the football side of things, a little bit of a shocker on Friday as news came out that Pete Golding, defensive coordinator of Alabama, is leaving for a fellow SEC West school. Chris Lowe of ESPN first reported that Golding leaving Alabama to replace Chris Partridge as defensive coordinator at Ole Miss. So it's crazy to you know leave one SEC West school for another one. Uh, particularly leaving a school like Alabama. But Golding, very often criticized by Alabama fans on, on social media and whatnot. A lot of people just weren't the biggest fan of his defenses. They were good, just not elite elite, uh, which is what Alabama fans become so accustomed with with their defenses. And uh, been with Nick Saban in Alabama since 2018. D.C. for the last four seasons. Came to Tuscaloosa after coaching DBs and uh, – serving as defense coordinator over at UTSA. Before that, he spent two years as an assistant coach at Southern Miss. Golding, uh, ahead of the Sugar Bowl, speaking with the media, was asked about his Alabama future, and he said, well, still under contract, so absolutely. Saying he planned to be there, but uh, now Alabama going to shift their focus. They got to figure out who's going to be their new D.C., and there's some reports out there. I'm sure this will get moving very quickly, but uh, Georgia co-defensive coordinator Glenn Schumann thought to be in the mix. Pat Smith of Jocks FM reporting that one, and then Bruce Feldman of Fox Sports also mentioning former Wisconsin D.C. Jim Leonard and former Alabama D.C. Jeremy Pruitt as uh, possibilities. Feldman noted the 32-year-old, 32-year-old Bama grad uh, Glenn Schumann broke into coaching as a student assistant, spent four years as an Alabama grad assistant under Saban. So it would make a lot of sense for him to return there. Now, there's another guy being added to Alabama's staff as Austin Austin Armstrong, not been formally announced as an Alabama hire just yet, but is already reportedly on campus. Multiple outlets reporting Friday that Austin Armstrong spent the past two seasons as D.C. at Southern Miss, is joining the Alabama coaching staff in an on-field role, Chris Lowe, saying that Armstrong will be taking the spot vacated when Charles Kelly just left for Colorado. Kelly was the associate defensive coordinator and safeties coach on Saban's staff, so another voice in the room there, but uh, won't won't be the firm D.C. I assume uh, they'll go and hire somebody else uh, to work alongside or work with Austin Armstrong and Nick Saban coaching up that defense. Pete Golding. Also served as Alabama's uh, inside linebackers coach in, ad- in addition to D.C. Uh, Lane Kiffin, he tweeted out ESPN's report on Saturday morning, basically confirmed it, and Ole Miss posted a video over the weekend of Golden getting off the private jet wearing an Ole Miss sweater. So all but confirming that. Uh, reports also say co-defense coordinators Chris Partridge and Maurice Crum will not be retained on Lane Kiffin's staff at Ole Miss. Now, sources... Uh, told ESPN that Pete Golding's decision to leave Alabama was his own and that he was not pushed out, but rather felt this move was best for him and his family. Golding's defense at Alabama this past season finished tied for ninth nationally, second in the SEC in scoring defense at 18 points per game. Tied led the SEC and were fourth nationally in yards per play allowed at 4.5. All four of his defenses at Alabama ranked in the top 20 nationally in scoring defense. But the Tide have not had a top five defense since 2017. That was when they led the country in points allowed under Jeremy Pruitt on their way to winning a national championship. Golding, uh, considered one of the nation's best recruiters on Alabama staff, but he'll be Lane Kiffin's third different D.C. in the last three seasons. Now, there's also strong possibility that Alabama going to lose Bill O'Brien as well. A lot of rumblings that uh, he will be on the move. And look, Alabama fans, all they're doing is applauding. <laughs> There's been a lot of Alabama fans been very critical of Pete Golding and Bill O'Brien. And I'm sure a lot of fans would like to see both of them move on and get some fresh blood in there. So we'll see. 
Thank you guys again for watching uh, Locked On SEC and listening to Locked On SEC. Coming up next, we will go around the conference with some transfer portal news. That's coming your way in just a second. But this episode is presented by our friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You get all the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there from pro football to uh, basketball. They've got it covered for you up there at betonline.net. They had all the games happening this past weekend in the NFL playoffs. They'll have all the action coming for you this weekend, and they got it all up there for you at BetOnline. They're the fastest and easiest way for you to get all your betting information. Head on over to their website today. You can do so on your mobile device, learn more. I always tell you, bookmark it on your phone. Great place to start your day to get all the betting information that you need. It is bet online, and it is where the game starts. Going along here, locked on SEC, and a little bit of a heavy show today. So let's kind of. Lighten the load a little bit as we uh, get back into going around the conference. We've got some transfer portal news to jump into and much, much more. So let's dive back into it. And we start over at Mississippi State as wide receiver LaDietrich Griffin has entered the transfer portal. Uh, he announced on Twitter on Friday. So I'd like to thank God for the position he put me in today. Also want to thank my family for everything they've done for me. Uh, Griffin was a special teams stud for the Bulldogs, earned uh, national recognition uh, for what he was able to do in the return game. Also finished out this season with a career high 40 catches for over 500 yards and four touchdowns. State also lost leading wide receiver Rara Thomas this offseason and transferred to Georgia. So uh, Will Rogers going to need to find some new weapons to help him in the passing game there for Mississippi State. Also, Mississippi State defensive lineman Javon Banks confirmed he is heading to Kansas State. He was a member of Mississippi State the past three seasons. Appeared in 15 games, had 25 tackles. He'll have three years of eligibility remaining at Kansas State. Zach Selman was formally introduced as the new Mississippi State athletic director on Friday. Two words they kept reiterating, class and integrity. He is 37 years old. Of course, comes from Oklahoma as a son and nephew of the famed Selman brothers there. And uh, a lot of remarks about how Zach grew up with powerful examples of winning at the highest levels. Winning the right way is in Zach Selman's DNA, they said. Selman accepted the, the position as the Mississippi State Bulldogs 18th athletic director after an accomplished career at Oklahoma on the executive leadership team. And one other Mississippi State note, uh, Kobe Albert a DB from Kentucky who entered the portal a week ago. He has announced he is heading to Mississippi State. He wrote on social media, y'all call it Stark Vegas, I call it home. So a big addition there for Zach Arnett. He was a four-star recruit, number 17 prospect from the state of Alabama when he came out. He originally committed to Auburn, but later flipped to Kentucky, made 10 appearances for Kentucky this season, and now he'll be heading to Mississippi State. Over at Arkansas, they lost a defensive lineman, Jordan Dominic, who's very productive for them this year as he has entered the transfer portal again and announced he is heading to Colorado. It's the third time he's transferred, started his career at Georgia Tech before coming over to Arkansas. Finished out last season with the Hogs, 34 combined tackles. Now their website lists them with seven and a half sacks. The SEC website lists them with eight sacks. But either way, he finished third in the SEC in sacks this year. Had a... Uh, uh, has a single season of eligibility remaining, and he's going to go do it for Deion Sanders up there at Colorado. Over to Alabama, one of their big uh, pickups from the transfer portal last offseason, Tyler Harrell, former Louisville wide receiver. They had high expectations for him. He has entered the transfer portal again. He struggled to see barely any playing time this past year at Alabama with an ongoing foot injury. Appeared in six games, but made just two catches for 18 yards. So he's the 14th Alabama player to transfer during this uh, uh, past offseason. And uh, he's the fifth receiver to transfer with Aaron Anderson, JoJo Earl, Treshawn Holden, Christian Leary, and now Tyler Harrell. Whoever the new Alabama quarterback is, he's going to have to figure out who his go-to weapons are next year. 
Uh, some good news over Florida as wide receiver Ricky Parasol announced uh, that he is returning to the Gators, led Florida in receiving yards and touchdowns this past year, 661 yards with five touchdowns. He'll be entering his fifth collegiate season, started his career at Arizona State for transferring to Florida in the uh, regular season finale against Florida State. He had five catches for 148 yards and two touchdowns. So he will be their leading go-to receiver next year at Florida. Over Tennessee, former four-star quarterback Taven Jackson, he is heading to Indiana. Uh, He announced over the weekend, sustained a collarbone injury in the win over Tennessee Martin back in October. It's been sidelined since. Tennessee, of course, uh, will be most likely starting Joe Milton as their quarterback next year. They're bringing in a five-star quarterback, Nico Yamalieva. So, uh, Taven Jackson heading on over to Indiana. Over at LSU, former DB Demarius McGee announced he is heading to the Big 12. He will play for the Kansas Jayhawks next season. Played in 12 games in 2021. Made only one appearance this past season. So, Demarius McGee heading to Kansas. Over at Missouri, it was a busy, busy weekend for them. Sidney Williams, a former Florida State safety, announced he is transferring to Mizzou. He followed former Ole Miss wide receiver Dennis Jackson and former Arizona State defensive end Joe Moore, all committing to play for the Tigers over the weekend. Now, Sidney Williams started four games for Florida State in 2021, had a lesser role this past season, recording 12 tackles. Uh, Moore is a Tiger legacy, played in just one game for uh, Arizona State in their tw- four-game 2020 season. The past two seasons, he's played in 22 games, and uh, he has two full seasons of eligibility remaining. And then Jackson was at Ole Miss for three seasons, declared for the transfer portal, and uh, for his career has 19 catches for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Also for Mizzou, Javen Foster, Mizzou standout lineman, He's returning for another year, shared the news on social media. This will be his sixth season at Mizzou. He was named an all-SEC second-team selection. So a big, big uh, get back for Javen Foster coming back to Mizzou. And in recruiting news, some good news for Mark Stoops and Kentucky as Jamarian Wilcox, 2023 running back, announced he is heading to play for the Wildcats. He is from the state of Georgia, announced his commitment on Friday at a top four of Kentucky, Auburn, Clemson, Ohio State, and picked the Wildcats. He's 5'7", 195 pounds, rated a three-star, number 37 running back, joins a Kentucky recruiting class that uh, already has a ton of players in it. So uh, good pick up there for Kentucky. And there you have it. That is the latest news going on around the conference. And uh, we got you all caught up. We will uh, get back into it tomorrow. Join us again here on Locked on SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Now go make sure you check out our brand new podcast, the Locked on College Basketball Show. Everything you need about college basketball in one place. Hear from some big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. It is Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked on SEC. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. 